Hi, this is Franklin Allaire again, State Director for the Hawaii State Science Olympiad, and I want to welcome you to Science Olympiad Basic Training Part 3. In this part, we're going to be focusing on what happens at the tournaments. One of the most common questions that we get is how we determine the uh, winners of our regional and statewide tournaments. So that's what this section is a little bit about. And to give us some focus, we're going to take a look at a uh, sample tournament scoring here. We have four high schools in this particular tournament, uh, Sam Choi High School, Kula High School, Kukui High School, and Aloha PCS. And they're going to compete in six different events, anatomy and physiology, astronomy, boomalever, chem lab, experimental design, and Fermi questions. Now for most of these events, um, the structure and the challenge and the rubrics for those events are created by the judges. Now Boomalever and experimental design do have some specific rubrics that judges can use uh, but again generally speaking for other events such as anatomy and physiology, astronomy, chem lab, and Fermi questions the test, the challenge, the stations, whatever it may be as well as the answer key and the rubrics are created by the judges themselves. Uh, what the judges then do is after they score the event, they assign each team a place. Uh, so the team, so at the end of the day, we have a scoreboard that looks something like this. And in anatomy and physiology, for instance, we see that Sam Choi High School came in first, Kula came in second, Kukui in third, and Aloha PCS in fourth. And we can see the results for all of the other events in here. And what we do is we assign each of these places a point value. Sam Choi gets one point, Kula two points, Kukui three, Aloha PCS four points for anatomy and physiology, and we add up all the points over here to get a total for each of the teams. And we can see from these totals that Sam Choi got a total of 13 points, Kula 18 points, Kukui 14 points, and Aloha PCS 15 points. And just like in golf, the lowest score is the winner. So because Sam Choi has the lowest score, they get first place. Kukui High School comes in second place. Aloha PCS comes in third place. And Kula High School comes in fourth place. If this was a regional tournament, that would mean that Sam Choi, Kukui, and Aloha PCS would qualify to go on to the statewide tournament. If this was a state tournament, that means that Sam Choi High School would get to qualify to go on to the national tournament and represent Hawaii at the uh, high school level of that tournament. Now that's just one potential scenario. You may have noticed here for each of the events that there are no ties and that's because judges are tasked with the responsibility of breaking all of the ties in individual events. Well occasionally because of the way the scores work out we can find ourselves with a tie at the end of the day. So how do we break a tie? You can see here that we changed the score slightly and what we got is that Sam Choi and Kukui are tied each with 13 points. So to break this tie, we go back to the individual events and we first take a look at how many first place medals they would get in each event. And we see that Sam Choi has two first places and Kukui also has two first places. So because those are the same, we then go to second places. And we can look and see that Sam Choi came in second for two events, Astronomy and Boomalever, while Kukui High School came in second in only one event, and that becomes the tiebreaker. So even though they have the same number of points, the tiebreaker gives Sam Choi first place, Kukui High School second place, Aloha PCS third place, and Kula High School fourth place. Once again, if this was a regional tournament, that would mean Sam Choi, Kukui, and Aloha PCS would go on to the state tournament. Sam Choi would also, then, if this was a state tournament, uh, would qualify to go to the national tournament. Now, as we talk about in other slides uh, and presentations as part of this basic training, uh, a Science Olympiad team could participate in as many or as few events uh, as they desire. So uh, what happens if teams decide not to participate in some events? Well, here we have that kind of scenario. 
where Kula High School and Kukui High School have decided for some reason to not participate in these events. And there could be various reasons for that. So in this particular case, what we would do is we would write NP in each of these blocks, uh, these blank blocks here on our scoreboard. Now we cannot give these uh, teams scores of zero because remember the lowest score determines the winner overall. And if we gave them scores of zero, then that would reduce their overall total. So what we do is we actually give them a score of one point greater than the total number of teams participating. So here we have one, two, three, four teams in this scenario. So if Kula does not participate in Boomalever, they get a score of five points. And they get the same score of five points for experimental design. Kukui High School did not participate in Fermi questions, so they get a score of five points. And the impact that this has on the totals is to increase the score. So obviously the more events you participate in, the lower score you can get. And as we see here, the result is that, once again, Sam Choi comes in first place. Aloha PCS is in second. Kukui is in third. And I'm starting to feel sorry for Kula High School, who again is in fourth place. Now, there is one more scenario that I want to go over with everybody today. And that is what happens in the event of a disqualification. Now, why would a team be disqualified from an event? There are a couple of different reasons. But I've chosen two examples here, Chem Lab and Boomalever, as examples uh, of disqualifying uh, things where you could be disqualified. Because uh, one of the main reasons a team would be disqualified from an event is really for safety reasons. So for instance, in Boomalever, uh, teams would have to wear safety goggles. And if a team isn't wearing safety goggles while testing their Boomalever, they could be disqualified. Uh, in chem lab, students need to come prepared not only with safety goggles, but also with long pants, uh, aprons or lab coats, as well as closed-toed shoes and all of the other things that we would expect students to be wearing in a chemistry lab. And that's one big reason why they could be disqualified. Now again, just like in uh, when teams don't participate, we can't give them a, sc a score of zero because that would reduce their overall score. Uh, what we do for disqualifications is we give them a score that is two points greater than the total number of teams. So once again, we have one, two, three, four teams here. So Kula was dis disqualified from Boomalever, so they get a score of six. Uh, Chem Lab, Sam Choi was disqualified from Chem Lab, so they get six points in this case. And uh, when we total up the scores, we see here that Kukui High School has the lowest score, so they would get first place overall in this scenario. Aloha PCS would get second place. Sam Choi would have third place, and I'm really feeling bad for Kula High School. I feel like I'm kind of picking on them here. I love Kula, by the way. You guys rock. Uh, so, uh, but they come in fourth place in this scenario as well. So these are four potential scenarios uh, and examples of how we would score things. Uh, it is definitely in your best interest to participate in as many events as uh, at the tournament as you can. It's of course important to read all of the instructions and all of the rules for each of the events to make sure that you don't get disqualified in any events. Uh, but this also goes back to the idea of uh, the philosophy of your team. Uh, in one of the other presentations, we talked about win, place, or show. What is the whole point of you and your students participating in Science Olympiad? Is it to show up and just participate and have fun? Is it to place in events? Is it to place at the tournament? Or is it to win overall? And so that really determines how many events you want to participate and the attitude that you and your students go in with. Uh, to finish up, I just wanted to share with you that if at any point you feel that you and your students are not being treated fairly, we do have an appeals form. We ask that you do not interrupt an event while it's going on, but if you, again you feel like you're being, treated, you're being treated unfairly or that a judge or event supervisor is not following the rule, uh, we ask that the head coach, we want to stress that, it is the head coach of the team that fills out this form. Uh, we ask that you specify the uh, specific page and paragraph 
from the coach's manual that you feel is being uh, violated or not followed. Uh, we ask that you submit any evidence, uh, any suggested, sol suggested solutions, and of course, we ask that the head coach apply their signature to this form. Now, after you submit this form to a designated person at any regional, statewide, or national tournament, we will then go and get the event supervisor's opinion, uh, as well as their signature on here. This will then go to uh, an awards, uh, or arbitration rather, committee, where they will come to a resolution. Uh, and we come to a resolution by taking into account not only the coach's perspective, but also the student's perspective, the event supervisor's perspective, but most importantly, we look at the rules manual. Are the rules being followed? And that's really the main guiding question here. But we do want to share with you that uh, there is a process in place to take care of you if you feel that you and your students have been treated unfairly. I do want to warn you, though, that uh, decisions by the appeals committee are final. So, uh, and that is the process that we use here. Uh, that's going to do it for this part of our presentation of basic training for Science Olympiad. Uh, I want to remind you just to finish off that we want you to get connected. You're not alone out there. Get connected with your fellow teachers, with other students, uh, with other people in the Science Olympiad world. You can do that through our website, hsso.org. You can always email us at highsciolympiad at gmail.com. And of course, we are on Facebook. You can go to our Facebook page and like us at facebook.com slash highsciolympiad. We've got teachers, we've got students, even some regional directors and event supervisors on our Facebook page. So if you post a question, uh, you are pretty likely to get a response. Well, that's it for now. We'll see you in part four. Thanks a lot.